Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video, I will show you a game between Harry Nelson Pillsbury and Max Jude. This very beautiful chess game was played in St. Louis in 1898. Pillsbury had white pieces and he started with d4. Max Jude played d5. c4, the queen's gambit. e6, the queen's gambit declined. Knight to c3, black to move, b6, knight to f3, bishop to b7, bishop to f4, bishop to d6, offering to trade bishops. Bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, c takes on d5, black to move. How to recapture? With the pawn or with the bishop? Bishop takes on d5 was split. Well, Joe didn't like e takes on d5 because the pawn would block his bishop on b7. So he played bishop takes on d5. But this move has a downside, and that is what? White can now play e4, and that's what Pillsbury did. Bishop to b7, rook to c1 a6 controlling b5 square bishop to d3 black to move knight to e7 ideally the knight would love to go to f6 but then e5 is unpleasant so we have knight to e7 and both players castled king's side white to move how would you continue now pillsbury played e5 Attacking the queen. Is this a good move or not? What do you think? Queen to d8. White to move. How can white improve his position? What would you do in this position? If you had white pieces, please pause and find the best move for white. Did you pause? What did you find? Did you find the Greek gift? Bishop takes on h7. Kaboom! Check! King takes bishop. If king to h8, then knight to g5 with queen to h5 to follow. Back to our game. King takes bishop. Knight to g5 check. King to h6. Let's take it back. If king to g8, then queen to h5. And after rook to e8, queen takes on f7 check. King to h8, white to move, there is more than one way to win. One of the ways is knight takes on e6 with a double threat. Back to our game. King to h6, white to move. Queen to d2, queen to g4 is also a good move. Queen to d2, threatening knight takes on e6, winning the queen. King to g6, white to move. Pillsbury played the best move. Something like h4 would be met by rook to h8 and black is ok. Back to our game. Knight to e2, threatening knight to f4 check. Knight to d5, let's take it back if rook to h8, then check and after king takes on g5, White takes on e6, double check, king to f5, knight takes on d8, rook takes knight, rook takes on c7, and white is winning. Back to our game. Knight to d5, preventing knight to f4 check. White to move, should white play h4, defending the knight, and then queen to d3 check. What do you think? That looks like a sensible plan. Instead, Pillsbury played this amazing. Queen to d3 check, sacrificing the knight for the attack. King takes knight. What is the follow-up? Pillsbury played f4, check. King to h6. Queen to h3, check. King to g6. Why to move? How would you continue now? Pillsbury played f5, check. Pawn takes pawn on f5. Rook takes on f5, threatening queen to h5, check, mate. 
Rook to h8, preventing queen to h5 check, but now queen to g4 check. King to h7, white, play the move and black resigned and the move is rook takes on f7. Jude resigned in view of this continuation. Queen to g8, queen to h5, check, mate. Wow, that was an amazing attack by Pillsbury, wasn't it? Did you ever have a chance to use a Greek gift in your games? Please like and subscribe and you will receive free puppy and kitten. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.